Really, this topic is called Further Applications of Area and Volume. Okay? Uh, the kinds of things it's going to include are lots of shapes that have lots of round parts to them. Okay? So when we look at surface area and volume, <laughs> bless you. That was like a sneeze and a half. Okay. When we go to surface area and volume, obviously where we're going to begin for those kinds of shapes is the area of a circle. Okay. Now, you know what the area of a circle is. We might just quickly review it though, just so you remember why it is what it is and um, important parts of how you can use it. Okay. So, to start with, okay, there are two formulas to do with circles. One for circumference and one for area and they're very alike. Formula for circumference? You've got, two, you've got two choices, don't you? You can either go pi d, which by the way, that's the definition of pi. That's where the number comes from. It's the ratio between the circumference and the diameter. Namely, the circumference is exactly that times longer than the diameter. Okay? 3.1 for 1 and you get the idea. Okay? Of course, there's the alternative way of writing the circumference, namely... 2 pi r. 2 pi r, very good. Because, of course, the diameter is just 2 r. Okay? So, so far, so good. The area formula, of course, is very, very close. How is it different? Pi r squared. Okay, so you may remember in the junior school that this is um, a constant source of confusion for students because of, like, they even use the same numbers, okay? What's the easiest way to remember which one's which? Any takers? How do you, why do you know that pi r squared is the area and not the other way around? Okay, because it's squared, like, think, need a color. Think of um, the units you're going to use to describe the circumference or describe the area. Okay, so for instance, if um, if I drew a circle, uh, okay, if we measure this all around and we use a string or something like that, we'd say the circumference is, you know, some number of say, what unit would you use to describe this particular size circle? Probably centimeters, I think. Meters is probably too big. Like this would be maybe less than a meter or just a meter. Centimeters sounds like a good choice. Okay. So being that the units for this are in centimeters, okay. As a parallel, the units for your area, if I'm going on the same circle, would be centimeters squared. And you can see, right? These match up. Okay. The number of dimensions here, centimeters by centimeters, matches the number of units of, uh, not units, the number of lengths that you have here, radius and then radius again, as opposed to just the ones. Okay. So, I want to show you a quick proof for this. Right? There's a couple of um, handy proofs for this, but you should know where they come from. It doesn't just come from thin air. Okay. So, I've got a circle over here. Draw yourself up a little circle. It doesn't have to be beautiful. I know you didn't bring your equipment with you. Well, you've got a little circle there. All of the proofs for the area of a circle or any kind of spherical thing, they all determine on like cutting it up into a bunch of different shapes. Okay, you can do this a couple of different ways. One way is cutting it up like a pizza, and then you'll get all these pizza slices and you can line them up. The way that I like doing it is like this, draw in your circle some concentric circles for me, as many as you can. Okay, so something like this. Oh, that's, that's terrible. Uh, that's not even the center, but oh well, you get the idea. Okay, so draw that up. Now what have we got here? Okay, I have a series of rings that they're all round at the moment, so that's not going to help me. But I can take those, those rings and I can stretch them out, right? So for instance, if I take like a sort of cross section like this, right? If I cut all of the rings here, right? If you imagine them kind of like, um, like a coiled up string that can then unfurl and I can straighten them out, right? I'm going to put them all end to end. I'm going to start from the one in the middle, okay? So this is going to be equal to, and if I unfurl it, I'll get a little section of a ring like that, okay? The next one here, this immediate one there, I'll just colour it in so you can see it. Uh, there it is. Is going to be, once I unfurl it, it's going to be a bit longer, isn't it? Right? But it'll be the same width, like this. Okay? Now if I keep going all the way until the end and I put them all next to each other in kind of like a stack, right? I'm going to get this kind of shape. It's going to keep going and eventually I'm going to get to the last ring, the one on the outside. This one. Okay? Now, quickly tell me, it's on the board, right? 
How long is that last ring when I unfurl it? How long is it going to be? It's, it's going to be all the way around, right? It's the circumference, isn't it? It's the outside, yeah? So therefore, when I've drawn all of these little strips up, and you should as well, and I line them all up, I could do more, but I'm just going to stop there for the sake of time, okay? This one along the end, this longest one, okay? It's going to be, from here to here, 2 pi r. It's the circumference unfurled. Now, you can see, if I could draw my rings really, really thin, okay, and I put them all up next to each other, you wouldn't see like a, a bar graph type shape. You'd just get a triangle, wouldn't you? Right? And there'd be all these little, little thin lines in here. This one still will be 2 pi r tall. But what will this measurement be? Where does that come from? Hmm. It comes from my original cut, doesn't it? Right? It comes from here. Right? I cut, and then all of these kind of stand up end to end. And that distance is, of course, the radius. Right? So you've got R going there. Right? Now this is just a triangle. And I know what its base is, and I know what its height is. Its area is going to be base times height over 2. Right? 2 is cancel, and that leaves you with the familiar result. Okay. Like I said, that's not the only way to slice it up. The alternative is to do it like this. And instead of, well, that's a bad cut. Instead of creating a triangle, if you take all of these pizza slices and you lay them end to end, you'll get a rectangle and you'll get much the same result. Okay? 